Ever since I graduated from Queen's University in June of 2021, I've been getting this one question. Was my CS degree a waste of time? Let's see, four years, $50,000, anxiety, depression, and I didn't even get to walk across the stage with my best friends. In fact, my diploma, it was shit in a box. Not even a fancy box, a box. But all jokes aside, there are so many ways to get into tech be it YouTube tutorials, self taught, online courses, boot camp. Everybody is doing different things today, and you wanna know whether a CS degree is right for you. Here we are now. I'm going to answer this question for you the best that I can. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my four year experience of completing a CS degree and why it was a complete waste of my time. Whether a CS degree is good for you will be based on the cost versus the reward. So what I want you to do is right now, grab a paper and pen on your notes app, on an iPad, whatever you wanna use, write down what your perceived value of a tech degree is and what does that value mean to you? Because what it really comes down to is the cost and the labor versus the reward. So that's the labor that it takes for you to get this thing and the reward, what you get out of it. So is it the network? Is it the internship experience? Is it the prestige? What is it for you? And if you can justify those two things, then maybe it is right for you. But for me, I'm gonna explain my takeaways and by the end of this video, you'll understand why it was a waste of my time and hopefully get a better idea of whether it would be worth your time. Before we get into this, if this sounds like something that you're interested in, I would really appreciate if you guys leave a like and subscribe so that more people can get to see this kind of video and so that I can know that you guys want this type of content. Thank you guys for doing that and let's get into this video. The first reason why my CS degree was a complete waste of my time is that many professors taught outdated and sometimes irrelevant material. And I know if you are a CS degree student right now or you graduated within the last five years, you can relate to this heavily. What it comes down to is that our professors have been taught this material in one way and believe it to be the best way to teach their students. So 10, 20, 30 years after, they are still teaching it that exact same way. And that's a problem. What happens is that we end up learning a lot of concepts, a lot of theory, a lot of the fundamentals, the foundation, and not a lot of application. You're thinking, whoa, I go to X university, and then you go to your first internship, and you're feeling excited, you're feeling pumped, you're feeling ready, and then you realize that you are so behind all the other people that are there. The people who taught themselves, the people that took boot camps, the people that learned off of YouTube, it's crazy how much application really matters in our internships. Some will argue that internships are there for you to learn, for you to get that hands-on experience, but what is the point of paying so much money to not even get that hands-on experience in university? That is why professors teaching outdated and sometimes irrelevant material really dampen my experience as an undergraduate CS major. The second reason might be controversial. Some professors have been there for way too long. And that might sound weird because with experience comes knowledge, comes age, and that should be a good thing, right? Well, here's what happens. My experience when professors have been there too long, specifically when professors have been teaching one course for way too long, is that it becomes stale, uninteresting, and hard to sit through. Let me give you guys an example. In my third year, we had to take a software fundamentals course. In this course, half of it you spend in a group of five working on building a game that you present to the class at the end of the semester. And for the other half of the course, you go into the lecture where you learn the software fundamentals. Guys, when I tell you my professor was the most monotone, low volume, uninspiring professor I've had through my whole undergraduate career, I cannot emphasize this anymore to you. And so going to lectures became really hard for me because I would end up dozing off after five, 10 minutes. Not to mention that his slides themselves were really dark, dingy, full of words, no visuals. And if we got lucky, once in a while, he'd throw in some code demos in there. But for most of it, I would just have to learn it on my own. I would take tidbits of the slide lecture content and learn most of it on YouTube. And that begs the question, why am I here? 
why am I paying $4,000 each semester to get an education and not be inspired? And unfortunately, this is the case for a lot of classes. A lot of courses have been taught by the same professor year after year after year. And I'm not sure if the professor is bored or maybe they are gatekeeping it, who knows? But these types of courses are really only suited for people who have prior experience that means for someone like me, who I was taking this course because it was mandatory, but also because I was really interested in finally being able to get into software development, people like us with no prior established interest or knowledge of it really can't thrive because it doesn't spark our interest. When those course valuations came at the end of the semester, you bet I spoke my mind. Courses like these need a juvenile spirit. They need professors who are dedicated to making students feel interested, professors who are lively and who engage students and inspire them to be creative. That's what I thought I was going into this class for, but as soon as I saw a professor, I knew that I was gonna be on my own. If you guys are liking this video so far, then do leave a like, subscribe, and a comment down, any emoji that you want to, and let's get back into this video. This next reason is gonna sound kind of Interesting. One of my biggest gripes is that some professors know way too much. If you know, you know. And if you don't know, I'm gonna explain it to you. Have you ever had a professor that knows so much about a topic that they're just not able to teach it to a bunch of students who need to learn? If you went to Queens and you are a CS student, you know exactly who I'm talking about. You spend so many hours in your free time when you're supposed to be learning the material, just trying to dissect what it is they were really saying. They present so much information to you because they're so excited, they're so passionate about the topic, which is great. I love passion, I love excitement. That's what we need out of professors. But we also need refinement, editing. We need professors who are able to give us the content that is relevant, that can be taught in a three, four month period. When professors know too much, what ends up happening is that you spend more time trying to dig through all the minutia so that you can really get to the core of what is being taught. And that can be so time consuming. This particular class that I have in mind, it wasn't even a difficult class. It was a class that I really love, but I had a hard time really engaging with the topic because I spent most of my time trying to determine what I should read, what I should omit. And this is especially true in your second year. Most people will agree that second year tends to be an information theory overload. Whew, and this is definitely the case. There is nothing more frustrated than leaving a class more confused than you were when you went in. Me and my friends, would come to class with multiple questions and we'd be lucky if we'd get one question answered and be lucky if we didn't have another 10 questions to add at the end of the lecture. I guess this is also a good sign of a really passionate professor, but there has to be a middle ground. That's the key. All right, enough about professors. Let's get into the actual design of CS degree. This will vary across different programs, across different schools. In my school, we have the CS major and different specializations underneath that. But for the most part, these are concerns echoed by many different CS majors. One of the key design flaws of undergraduate CS degree programs is that you don't really get to niche and take the courses that you really want to take until you're in your third year of university. This comes down to a design flaw. So at my school, the way it works is that in your first year, you are just a general student. So even though you apply to the School of Computing, in your first year, you are a general arts and science student. And then at the end of your first year, you then get to apply to the specific program that you are interested in. They advertise this as a way of spending your first year getting to know what you like, getting a feel of the program, and then deciding on what you want to take. I believe this is false advertising. What it ended up being was people fighting to get into programs because there's only a certain amount of spots, you need a certain grade to get in, and you still have to take prerequisite courses. There are still core courses to take, and if you don't have them, then you can't get in. So the design doesn't really allow you to be that flexible. You can take one or two elective courses if your program of interest allows you to. In my first year, every single one of my courses 
besides one course was mandatory in order for me to apply into the biomedical computing specialization program at my school. Further to my point of not being able to niche until your third year, your first and second years is really just taking a bunch of theory courses, a bunch of prerequisite core courses with a few electives here and there. So for the most part, computer science students will be taking the same exact courses for first and second year with the exception of the electives, of course. Why I think this is a problem is that I believe that students should be able to take courses that they are interested in and the core courses concurrently. Let me give you guys an example. Back in 2016, I was going to different schools, I came to Queens, and I met with a professor who introduced me to the biomedical computing program. There was a demo there where they showed this breast tissue and a probe, and they were showing me how the probe was able to detect where the cancerous tissue was. They called this computer integrated surgery as part of the biomedical computing specialization program. It took a while, but then I was sold. And that was the reason why I came here. Just to find out that I wouldn't be able to take that course until my third year of university. So in my first and second year, I was pretty much just a part-time life science student and a part-time computer science student. And I didn't get to realize what I came to the school for until my third year. That was two years of just coasting through, waiting until I could take the course that I really came here to take. And this is a really key design flaw because a lot of students get turned off by this. Because if you're in a program, and you think the program is supposed to give you X value, then it should deliver on that value. You shouldn't have to wait till four or five years later until you're reaping the benefits of what you've sown. I think that these departments need to do a better job of integrating interesting courses in the beginning years of a student's undergraduate career and not just making these as pillars that they can reach once they're in their third and fourth year. There needs to be balance. There needs to be a balance between the core courses and the courses that are exciting and are interesting. This brings me to my next point. I really take issue with the way core courses and prerequisites in general are set up. In my program, for certain core courses, you had to get a minimum of a C in that course in order to take another course. And if you didn't meet that minimum requirement, then sometimes you wouldn't be able to take other courses. Sometimes that one course that you didn't do so well on feeds into two or even three different courses and now you are way behind and then they don't even offer that course that you didn't meet the minimum requirement for until a year after. So you're forced to either take all your electives in one time or to beg whoever the administrator is to allow you to take the courses that you should be taking concurrently with the course that you did not meet the requirements for. I understand the need for prerequisite courses, but if students are putting in money and time to come here and get an education, having to be derailed semesters, sometimes even years because of one course, then there's a design flaw there. And let's also talk about the fact that some prerequisite courses really are not justified. Generalizing prerequisite courses in a way that derails students is not okay, especially when that core course really isn't all that important to the specific field that this person might be going into. No one person can embody all that computer science is. There's just too much. There's the data science, there's the game designers, there's the software developers. There are so many fields within tech and I just don't understand why CS degrees are set up to make you learn everything there is about everything instead of making the core courses smaller and then letting students choose the courses that they want to take within it. There are some courses that are mandatory, data structures, algorithms, but then there's some other courses that arguably are important to know, but not for everybody. Not if it doesn't apply to your field. And that begs the question, how do students get to learn about what they would be interested in if they're not taught everything? And I think that's where we need to focus the design element in. How do we structure CS degrees such that students get a balance of the must-knows, the application, and then the experimentation? If we can do that, a lot more students would have a easier and more fruitful time while they're doing their CS degree. My final reason why my CS degree was not worth it is because most of what I learned that was useful for me was learned on the job and not in school. You can't learn more than when you're on the job. Nothing teaches and preps a student for what the real world is like than an internship. Theory is nice. Concepts are nice, but is it worth $50,000?
What do you think? Is a CS degree worth it? Do you think there are some things I might have missed of why it's not worth it? If you're interested in this topic, click the notification bell because I'm gonna be doing a part two on why my CS degree was absolutely worth it because there's always two sides to every coin. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you learned a thing or two. And if you're in administration and you're thinking, wow, I implore you to reach out to me on LinkedIn and I would love to talk about some of the design flaws specifically and how we can inspire professors to inspire us because that's really what it comes down to, quality of learning, quality of application, and how we engage students that decide to take a CS degree. My name is Nicola Sainday, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know so I can be more encouraged to make videos like this. Thank you guys, have a great day.